If I sold the 458, what would the other options be? Today's video is sponsored by Rich Reviews. Rich Reviews now provides services to support our viewers in purchasing their own dream supercar. Our services currently include pre-purchase inspection, support calls and collection video to document you collecting your own dream supercar. More information in the description below. Hope you enjoy the video guys. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Rich Reviews. And today you join us driving out to get a coffee and we're gonna have a discussion about am I selling the 458? And if I am selling the 458, then what am I gonna buy? What's the options out there to buy? What am I thinking of purchasing to replace the 458? Now that I've changed the exhaust on this car and I've put the Forza controller on the car, check the description below for a link to the video. It's really changed the characteristic of this car. Um, all the extra verbals that you get now when the car's in the lower, lower RPM state, which would be hidden by the valves being closed. It's substantially changed the characteristics for sure. But I wouldn't want it to be like this all the time. I wouldn't want the valves to be open all the time. So it's very important that you can switch the valves at will. For example, I live in a very quiet, small village. And the last thing I want to have to do is wake everybody up and piss everybody off by the by the noise of the exhaust so it has its times when you want the valves to be closed. I know a lot of people just um, take the pipes off the off the solenoids and they leave it and they block and they block the pipes up so they they leave it in effect as the valves are open all the time but that's just you know a, a one trick pony that's just a, a one fixed state it's um, it's not a good position to be not for me anyway maybe that will work for them but it doesn't work for me. Anyway, we're just going to park up now in Marlborough and then you'll join us afterwards when we have a discussion about um, about what my thoughts are regarding the selling 458 and what the options are that we'll think about buying if I do sell it. So we've just pulled up into another almost idyllic quiet area. We thought it was a quiet area. It seems to have more traffic than Marlborough High Street, but um, it's always the way you park a, a, a red supercar somewhere and everybody tends to just drive by. It's just pure luck. I know, first of all, you'd be looking at the car and you'd be thinking, what the hell do you want to bloody sell it for? It's a 458. 458s are going through the roof financially. They're just going up and up and up in prices. Everybody wants them. Why would I possibly want to sell it? You have a point. And, and that's one of my big quandaries. You know, do I really want to sell it? But you have to move forward. And, you know, once you've tried things, you can, you, you know, you move on. I mean, I remember when I was looking at buying a 458 and people were selling them. And I was thinking, well, why would anybody want to sell a 458? You know, they're great cars. I'm going to keep it forever. But once you've owned one, then, you know, you, you feel like you want to move on. That's not to say I'm definitely going to move on. But what would the other options be? You know, if, if, I, if I sold the 458, now, obviously, uh, being honest, yeah, the market is so strong at the moment, I'd make a profit on the car. So what's not, what's not to like about that? Well, that's a good thing, but exponentially, all the cars have gone up that I would possibly move into, so you don't win. It's like, you know, if, with the housing, housing market, 
you know, you buy a property, you sell that property, you think, okay, well, the markets um, increase, increase, increase exponentially. You sell your house, you get more for it than you paid for it, but then the next house you move into is exponentially higher and is increased in value with, with respect to what it would have been as well. So, you, you know, do you really gain anything? Well, not really, not unless you get out of the market totally and go and buy a, a caravanette or something, you know? <laughs> Obviously, I'm not going to do that. From the brand's point of view, you could say there's three, three major brands out there for me to choose from that really, you know, I'd be looking at. Lamborghini, Ferrari, and McLaren. McLaren just never really floated my boat. I mean, maybe a 720, 720 prices are pretty fantastic at the moment. Um, you get a hell of a lot of car for, the, for, for what you pay. But I'm just not interested in a McLaren, you know. F1 is the only McLaren. I see the F1 as the as the only McLaren, really. And of course, there's no way I can afford that. Um, but that, in my mind, that is the McLaren, and then everything else is like made by another company, really. And pretty much they were because it's uh, it's not uh, Gordon Murray anymore, of course, the downstream market, um, apart from the new T50, etc. Derivatives that have been made now. So really, it resolves down to Lamborghini or Ferrari. So if I went with Lamborghini, what would I buy? Would I buy the Evo, the Hurricane Evo? It'd be one of the Hurricane model, models, really. I'm not really in, interested in the Technica, which is the new model that's just come out, which is the new variant of the Hurricane. Um, so it'd probably be the, the Evo or one of the earlier, or the early, earlier first edition uh, Hurricanes. So it'd probably be the Evo, probably be the rear wheel drive. So that is an option. I, I do like the Hurricane Evo, it's a, it's a lovely car. Negatives of that though is of course you've got the Audi input there. So you've got the Audi input from the from the point of view of the build quality, which of course is, is a big pro, you know, you get fantastic build quality. But on the negative side of that, you get the Audi build quality, you get the switch gear. So you get um, you get switch gear that's used in their other in their other vehicles. So that's not so good. You want a supercar to be special. And Again, with the Audis, with this, again with the Hurricanes, you've got this um, the big console, the big screen console, the touch console, uh, whereby you, you you select a lot of, of your options for the air conditioning, for the heat, for the seats, and everything else. But the trouble with that is, again, it's taking your attention away from driving, and I think it's dangerous to be honest. These touch screens, I think they're dangerous. You know, um, these manufacturers, especially supercar manufacturers, do they really need that in a car? I think Bugatti had it right with the, with the Veyron and Chiron. Um, without having any, any any electronic screens in it per se that you know for changing all your options they have switch gear it's it's not going to date and um, whereas these cars that have these screens on them and even the 458 that's got the electronic screens in there they're, they're dated they're already dated you know they're it's old hat technology and of course with with that sort of technology there's more to go wrong i'd much rather have physical switch gear it's it's too much they're putting all this electronics in cars hopefully they will reverse that back but then with the hybrid systems going forward it isn't isn't it it's not likely to but uh, I digress. So moving back to the topic of, you know, what car would be the next car for, for the Rich Reviews channel. So if we investigate the route of me staying with a, with a Ferrari supercar, we've got the options of the, as I mentioned, the 488, the F8 and the 296. So retrospectively, you've got the 488, that's 660, 661 brake horsepower. Um, if you go with the F8, you've got 710 brake horsepower. And if I go for the 296, you've got 830 brake horsepower. The 458 at 560 odd brake horsepower, 561, 562 brake horsepower. You don't need anything more than that, you know? Um, this loses its traction if I, if I push it a bit hard, even in the dry weather. To be honest, I would see a 488 going backwards. I know a lot of people, it's going to annoy a lot of people out there, but I just don't see a 488 as an advancement on a 458. It's just not for me. Um, you know, I could have bought a 488 instead of the 458, and I decided to buy a 458. So, you know, I made my decision from the outset. With regards to the F8, I've test driven the Tributo and I've test driven the Spider. And fantastic car, supremely fast, 710 brake horsepower, fantastic. But again, you don't need that amount of brake horsepower. They lose traction quite easy. Um, it's just too much and, and the sound is awful, you know, compared to the 458. So, and, the, and to me, they're a lot wider. I know there's not that much in it compared to the 458, but I just much prefer the 458. And also with the 488 and the F8, you've got the, the big induction scoops at the back on the rear haunches. They've, in my opinion, it's ruined the, the rear design of the car. So I'd, I'd much prefer the styling of the 458 where you've got the sleek curves coming down from the front. 
Um, the air you've got some, some venting over the wheel arches to actually release the pressure over the wheel arches, which is all about aerodynamics. But the way that the, the air comes across the rear haunches and into the back to cool the radiators and to cool the engine, I just think that's fantastically designed. Maybe I'm talking myself into never selling the 458, and you know. Um, and then if we investigate the options on, on a V12, so with the GTs, you've got the option there really of the F12 and the 812. And so with the F12, you've got 730 brake horsepower. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful car and, and the, the F12 is great, but it's, it's a bit, um, I, I think a lot of people, and, and it's well known that the F12 is a bit crazy, you know, it's, it can lose traction very easily and you can, you know, it's trying to kill you all the time, really, the F12. The 812 really was calmed down because it was perceived that the F12 was just a bit too raucous, really. Um, and what's not to love about the 812? I really like the 812. I mean, if I could afford an 812 GTS, fantastic, you know, happy days. I'd, I'd love to buy one of those. I just love the lines of the 812. Uh, I just love the lines of the 812 GTS. So really that resolves us down to the 458 Speciale or an 812 Superfast. Great car, love the Superfast. Prefer the GTS, they changed the styling in the GTS um, on the back and obviously with the with the roof line in with, with the roof line with it being um, a, um, a folding roof, the styling on it has changed quite a bit. So I, I much prefer the GTS, but I can't afford the GTS. You know, those prices are going crazy now. I mean you're looking at um, 360, you know, really, 360, 370 for a GTS, for an 812 GTS, and they're just going up and up and up now as well. And the super fast, really, they're, they're going up in price as well, but they are within the affordable bracket with the amount I'd be able to um, recoup from the 458 Spider. So that's really the option. Um, you know, if Speciali's leveled out, then maybe I look at a Speciali. If, an eight, if the 812 Superfast don't increase too much, then maybe an 812 Superfast. And then you've got the situation of, well, would the 812 Superfast, if I bought that, would that be the end game? Probably not, to be honest. You know, if I was going to buy an 812 Superfast, I then looked for that to be a bridging stepping stone into an 812 GTS. There is a possibility that I could also switch and bridge across into a Speciali. But again, even though I prefer a Speciali and I love the Speciali, they're just too, too mileage sensitive, uh, especially the way the prices are going up. The more, the more these prices increases on these cars, the more mileage sensitive really that they become, you know, it's just a crazy situation. I talked about this in one of my earlier videos, uh, the video with regards to do I drive my, my 458 enough, um, about mileage sensitivity and how it motivates also people to move towards nefarious activities um, using mileage blockers. It's a crazy situation with this mileage sensitivity, but you can't get away from it, it is what it is. People want to buy low mileage cars, um, but then they complain because they can't drive them. And you know, JM on cars, he covered this off as well, quite aptly, you know. He had a, he had a full blown video on it. It's, it's a crazy situation, it's very circulatory. And uh, you know, what do you do? <laughs> so, hauling it all back now. <laughs> and bringing it back, back to a conclusion. What are the options? What am I really looking at buying? Well, really it comes down to a Speciali or an 812 Superfast. A Speciali, you could say, is too much the same as the 458. It is at the end of the day, the advancement of the 458. So an 812 Superfast would be a great buy. It's a big change though, because it's changing obviously from a mid-engine supercar to a front engine or to front rear engine, as they call it, because the engine's quite a way back behind the front axle. Um, GT car, so, um, but uh, the V12 is intoxicating. The V12 is intoxicating. So that's my thought process really. 458 Speciali or an 812 Superfast. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Should I go for a GT model, change out from the 458 supercar to a GT model? Or should I advance up to Speciali, to the, to, to the latest advanced or to, to the most advanced version of the 458? Let me know in the comments below. We're really interested to know what your perceptions are. I think it's really gonna garner very, very different opinions and different perceptions on what I should do. And also let me know if you think I should never sell this car. So, hope you've enjoyed this little rant. I've gone on a bit about, <laughs> about the different options there. And you know, like I say, I haven't really fully decided whether I'm gonna sell the car yet or, and if I do, when I'm gonna sell it. We've got the summer coming up. We've got a lot of events that we wanna do with the 458 that we're already booked in for. And next weekend, we've got a great event that we're doing with some friends as well, which is pretty cool. So. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know. Let me know in the comments below. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Fantastic content to come. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. And we'll see you in the next video.